In this video, I'm going to talk about identification spaces. And when I say that, I'm thinking about like the quotient topology, but in particular with respect to a set having an equivalence relation. And so we'll see, um, again, how we can equip the set of equivalence classes with a topology uh, that comes from the topology on the original set. So here's kind of the setup. If X is a set and you've got an equivalence relation tilde, that's on that set there. I want to go through, just kind of start from the beginning. What does that mean? So recall tilde is, if it's an equivalence relation, it's got three properties. Number one, it's reflexive. And that means that X has to be related to X for every little X in your set. Uh, so in other words, another way to think about that is if you think about these relations as like ordered pairs, then X comma X always has to be uh, in the set, in the, in the equivalence relation. Number two, it's symmetric. And what that means is if X and Y are in the set X and X is related to Y, which is what this says, then Y should be related to X as well. So you have symmetry, it shouldn't matter what order you talk about those in. Again, the ordered paired idea, if X comma Y is in the relation, then so should Y comma X. And finally, the relation should have the transitive property. So if you've got X, Y, and Z that are in the set, and if they're such that X is related to Y and Y is related to Z, uh, then if it's transitive, you should have a bridge you know, Y kind of acts like a bridge from X to Z is how I think about it. So X should be related to Z as well. So that's the transitive property. And so again, if your relation tilde has all three of these, then it's an equivalence relation. And so some more uh, vocabulary in the idea of equivalence relations that uh, you've probably seen before. We usually use like brackets on the X. So brackets on an element of our set. And what that stands for is it's all the elements in the set that are related to that particular element at little x. And what we'll call this thing, what we'll call this set, we'll call it an equivalence class of x. So again, all the elements in your set that are related to little x here, right? The thing that's in the brackets. And what we'll do is we're gonna treat these, uh, oops, sorry, I got a little bit ahead of myself. So one thing about equivalence classes, an element only lies in one equivalence class. So like for this little X, he's only gonna lie in that class. He won't lie in any other, anybody else's class. And so, right, each element lies in only one equivalence class. And what that also says is that, you know, the equivalence classes, you might remember they partition your set. So they divide the set into like a bunch of little subsets that don't have any overlap and they union together to give you back the whole set. Now what I wanted to say is we're gonna treat these things, these little bracket X's, the equivalence classes, you can treat those as objects themselves. And so where do those live? So the set of all equivalence classes, we usually denote it by X bar tilde. And how people usually say that is X uh, mod tilde. So what that means again is, so X mod tilde here is the set of all my equivalence classes where the equivalence classes are taken with respect to this equivalence relation. So this is again, like the, the general vocabulary of how do we talk about uh, a set of equivalence classes. All right, so the last thing before we look at an example to kind of go through this kind of abstract stuff, there's a natural map, or I don't know, if you want to say function, that's fine too. We call it pi, and pi has domain x, and it has a codomain, and in fact range, uh, x mod tilde. And so what should it be defined by? Well, what pi is gonna do is it's gonna take an element of x and it's just gonna send it to its equivalence class. So pi of x equals the equivalence class of x. So again, in this way, natural map, we kinda, what's like the only association you could probably think of between these two sets? Why don't I take an element and I'll associate it to its equivalence class? So that kind of, I don't know if there's, Common sense, that's probably unfair to say in a topology video, but like what else would you do with X? That's what we mean by a natural map here. That's what I mean anyway. And we'll call pi the projection map. And so uh, of course this pi from X to X mod tilde, if we're just taking X and it lands on its equivalence class here, uh, then for any element of X mod tilde, of course there's an element back here in the domain uh, that gets mapped to it. So in other words, I'm just trying to say that pi is surjective and it's kind of obvious, or pi is onto, whichever vocabulary word you like. So let's look at a concrete example that ties all this good stuff together. So what if your x is the set of integers? And uh, I'm picking this because, you know, if you've seen some of this before, maybe in like a proofs class or like an abstract or modern algebra, whatever your institution calls it, we'll say that x, so two integers a and b are related to each other. If let's say a is equivalent to b mod five. And if you've never seen this notation here before, all that's trying to say is that five, this number here, it divides the difference of b minus a. So five divides b minus a. So what would the equivalence classes be then? 
So you're supposed to take my word for it that this tilde here, that this relationship defines an equivalence relation. You're supposed to take my word for it, but it's not too hard for you to go through and check one, two, and three in pink right here. But if I go back here, what would the set of equivalence classes look like? Well, I'll, I'll denote them by bracket zero, bracket one, bracket two, bracket three, bracket four. And maybe if you remember from like abstract algebra, you know, those are the possible remainders when you divide by five. Those don't have to be the, the numbers that I choose to represent each class. For instance, like I could have equally well used one to represent the class for, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I could have equally well used six to represent the class for one, if you think about it, right? Since six is also an element of this one. Anyway, though, you just got to pick one and like that's his representative. So, so all I'm trying to say is you've seen this before if you've had that like a Proust class or modern algebra, that's Z5 or from maybe more abstract algebra kind of ideal theory, Z mod 5Z, same thing. So again, just trying to relate this kind of weird structure, right? How do I get this set via the equivalence classes here? Uh, it's, it's just a, a more formal way to talk about what you may have seen before in another class. And let's think about pi, pi from the integers to z mod five. What's it defined by? I'll just take x and I'll send it to its equivalence class. And I've got a little picture for you down here to try to help you visualize what does pi do. So I'm thinking about z is like this number line here where I'm only writing the integers down got pi and I'm about to draw you a bunch of arrows, but pi is just an assignment of each integer is going to be assigned to one of these five boxes over here on the right. And so of course, negative five, zero, five, those are all divisible by five, the remainder is zero, so they all get sent to the equivalence class zero. So that's what pi, that's where pi sends them. Similarly, negative four, one, you could guess six would be next as well, I just didn't want to draw all those out. Those all uh, get sent to one, uh, three, five, etc. they get sent to two. Um, what else? Oh, negative three and five. I'm sorry. What did I just say? Negative three and uh, two. They get sent to, to two. My bad. And now what am I looking at? I'm in the red. So negative two and three. And the next one would be eight. Those all have, those all get sent to three. Those are all equivalent to three. And uh, finally, what all gets sent to four? How about stuff like uh, negative one and four, and the next one would probably be nine, et cetera. Those all get sent to four. So just to try to emphasize that idea that every integer gets sent to one of these boxes here. And so you can kind of visualize, okay, yeah, that, that map's definitely on to. Okie dokie. So what are we gonna do now? What if X is a topological space? So everything I just got done talking about, I didn't have any structure on my set X. I didn't say anything about a topology on my set X either. So, you know, I picked that, the integers and stuff mod five, and maybe you're used to doing some algebra with that. We're not doing any of that. Just as far as the construction goes, that was supposed to be familiar. So now what if X has a topology now? And I'll call that topology uh, my T here, or tau, whatever you want to call it. I'll say T probably. And what if you have uh, an equivalence relation on X? So how do I make X mod tilde a topological space? So if X is a topological space, and I've got an equivalence relation, I make X mod tilde, what can I do in order to define a topology on X mod tilde? And what does it have to do with the topology on X? So in particular though, I don't just want any topology. You know, you could always put like the discrete topology or like the, uh, the trivial topology on a set and that's cool. What I want though is, I want a topology that I can put on X mod tilde that'll ensure that the projection map is continuous. And remember what it means there. That means that uh, um, you know the pre-image of an open set in X mod tilde has to be open back here. I wanna make sure that that happens. So that's how I wanna carefully define what are my open sets in X mod tilde. So the answer to that is the quotient topology, which again was kind of from my other video on quotient topologies. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna say, okay, a subset of X mod tilde is open just whenever it's pre-image is in the topology in X. In other words, when its pre-image is open in X. And we got a concrete example coming up soon, but maybe you should think about, it. is this an okay way to define a topology? How do I know this will work? Maybe you're thinking about like your, what are your axioms for a topology? Remember you need arbitrary unions to still, arbitrary unions of open sets should still be open and uh, intersections of finitely many um, open sets should still be open as well. And uh, some nice set theory stuff is, is that, well, if you take the pre-image of an intersection of finitely many open sets, then that's the same thing as the intersection of each of the pre-image. So, right, so that the inverse image plays nicely with like an intersection here. And uh, why is that good for me? Uh, what that guarantees me then is that if each one of these individually is open, 
in x, then I know that their intersection is open in x as well, because x already has this topology on it, and that's the same thing as this. So that guarantees me that that pre-image uh, is in fact gonna be open. So what does that tell me? That tells me in particular that, okay, then that means that the intersection of each of these individually should be open. And similarly, unions work as well. When you take the uh, pre-image of an arbitrary union of open things that are in x mod tilde, that's the same thing, set theory-wise, as doing the union of each individual pre-image first. And so maybe, uh, how am I thinking about why is that good? I want to make sure that the union of a bunch of these things, U alpha, is still open here. And what I'm saying is, is that, well, individually I know each one of these is open, so I know that this whole union is open. Therefore, yes, this would have to be open. And that guarantees me that this inside is open. All right, so then those properties, again, some good set theory stuff, they ensure that the quotient topology satisfies the requirements to be a topology. So again, this is a good definition that'll give me a topology on X mod tilde. Now let's do like a concrete example. Let's say X is the interval from zero to one. So all the real numbers between zero and one inclusive. And let's define tilde by, let's just say zero is related to one or zero is uh, equivalent to one. And the other thing I'm gonna have is X is just related to itself. So and when I say only here, I mean that like one half is only related to a half. He's not related to anybody else. So for everybody else, there's only one element in each equivalence class. And then zero and one are in the same equivalence class. Okay, so X mod tilde, what does it essentially do? Like we're saying that these two points, zero and one are the same, right? They're in the same equivalence class. So how you wanna think about that is we're essentially gluing zero and one together gluing them together, gluing those things. So if you think about this as an interval, I'm saying we're gonna just glue these two together and these just get represented by themselves. And so what does that look like? Well, here's X, zero, one, and I'm gonna try and do some color coding here. I've got pi, and remember pi is a map that tells me about what does X mod tilde look like. And what we just said is, well, zero and one, the uh, kind of reddish points, they're the same equivalent, they're in the same equivalence class. And that's what I mean by it kind of takes it takes my interval there and it kind of wraps it around and glues it to itself there. So that's a good idea for what X mod tilde might look like. So all the green stuff gets sent to itself, right? Everybody's in its own equivalence class in green, but again, zero and one get sent to the same class. And again, that's how it kind of glues to itself. So now what we want to do is talk about some topology stuff here, right? So that was just kind of sets, nothing about topologies for this example here. But let's say that X, the interval from zero to one, has the subspace topology that it inherits from the usual topology on the real line. So like, you know, usual topology that's induced by the absolute value function. So in particular though, what do you gotta be careful about? Maybe you're used to college algebra, like the inter open interval from uh, you know, zero to one, I'm thinking open intervals are open. Um, you know, how many times can I say open? But in this case here, you know, if zero to one with brackets, if that's like your, your, your ambient set, if you wanna call it that then, then like if you had a bracket zero or like a bracket one, those count as open in X as well. And that's where, again, that definition of the subspace topology is helping me think about what are the open sets on just this interval as they relate to the real line. Okay, so that was some subspace topology kind of stuff. Hopefully that makes sense. You can go watch a video on that. But moving on with this, what's the quotient topology? What should it be? The quotient topology on X mod tilde, it should be what are all the things in the power set of X mod tilde whose pre-image is open in the interval from zero to one. And I just wanna walk through a little example really quickly. Okay, so there's my interval from zero to one. And I'm thinking about, all right, there's X mod tilde. And again, I maybe used a different color than I did earlier, but zero and one are in the same equivalence class and everybody else is in a different equivalence class. Let's look at the set U, which is all the equivalence classes where the representative X is between uh, one fourth and three fourths. So there's my picture of maybe what that looks like as far as uh, that set in X mod tilde goes. So that's open, I claim. So I claim that that purple is an open set in X mod tilde. And let's talk about why. And what we said what we need to do, just to take you back through the definition here, when is U open? It's open whenever the pre-image is open in the original set. So what we need to do is think about, well, what's the pre-image? What is the pre-image of that set U? In other words, what's the stuff in X down here? What's the stuff in X that gets sent to that purple? And the definition, of course, is gonna help me. So what is the pre-image of U? Well, if I think about kind of going backwards here, the pre-image would just be the interval from 1 4th to 3 4 
And so there's my picture there. And now what am I doing? That's the thing that I'm gonna analyze. I know that this set is open in that interval from zero to one. So therefore, since the pre-image of you is an open set in a zero one, that's what guarantees me that you itself must be open in this identification space or in this quotient space.